Good morning, Faith Family. My name is Tammy, and I'm one of the pastoral team members. Uh, today's midweek devotion takes us into Ezekiel chapter 25. Ezekiel chapter 25 moves us into a new section of his prophecy, from internal chastisement to a series of oracles against the surrounding nations until chapter 32. And so God spent four chapters between 25 and 29 addressing Judah's immediate neighbours through Ezekiel. In chapter 25 alone, the Lord addresses Ammon, Moab, Edom and, and Philistia. I won't go into the details of each of the tribes' judgment, but in summary, the judgments pronounced on these nations were due to their gloating, participation or revenge in Judah's downfall in their own evil ways. The overarching theme is that as God judges these nations, His sovereignty will be highlighted. So what does this all mean to the original audience? Ezekiel was actually pronouncing these oracles to the Judeans of his time and not actually to the nations that will be punished. But why would God do that? Why would God share these oracles um, to the nations and yet not deliver to them? Well, there are a few things that I have observed here. First of all, God does not operate on a double standard, where He judges only His people's sins while allowing other nations to behave as they like. The outpouring of God's wrath extends to not only the rebels in the house of God, but also to those who refuse to recognize His sovereignty. And yet, despite God's wrath on His people, they are still nonetheless His and infinitely precious to Him. So to take God's people lightly is never a good or safe thing in the Old Testament times. The nations insulted His people and therefore they have insulted God. Those who rejoice over Israel's downfall, even over the downfall at the hands of the Lord Himself, are simply inviting a curse on their own heads. So this is in fact a message of hope for the exiled people. What does this all mean and what does this mean for us today? Well, there are two things that I picked up. First of all, it's about warning and accountability. The oracles served as a stern warning to the Judeans of Ezekiel's time. It emphasised that God's judgement extends not only to his own people, but also to the surrounding nations. God doesn't allow others to kick his children down while they are being disciplined, and their actions will have consequences. To me, I feel like what a macho father we have. The oracles emphasise that no one is exempt from accountability and actions against God's people invite consequences. This should also give us great comfort and assurance that God will take care of the injustices that we are witnessing around the world. Often I wonder if we have also been on the other end in which we behave more like the surrounding nations, gloating at our enemies or perhaps wanting the worst for them, whether inside or outside our Christian community. So we need to constantly examine ourselves to make sure that we don't fall to the other side of gloating or taking advantage of another fellow brother or sister suffering, no matter how much they have hurt us, no matter how much we feel they don't deserve kindness or grace. Our responsibility is simply to just respond in love. Love not in the lovey-dovey, enabling bad behaviour kind of way, but by doing what's right and good for and by them. It is then God's responsibility to meet out justice in His way and His time. I also often wonder why God doesn't intervene immediately. Why doesn't God remove the evil people in my life or stop the wars that are happening around currently and save the people? One commentator explains that it could be that God still wants to show mercy to even the wicked. One indication of God's merciful nature can be found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, when Peter answers those who accused God of the tardiness in his meeting of judgment. He says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, 
but that all should reach repentance. This is a personal reminder and a lesson for myself as well to be patient with the injustices that I see around me. The second thing that I picked up is that there is hope amidst the exile. Despite the judgment and exile, the message carried a glimmer of hope. It reminded the exiled Judeans that God remained in control of history. The oracles pointed towards a future restoration, symbolized by the promise of a new glorified temple. The idea of a corrupted temple being replaced with a promised glorified one carries special uh, spiritual significance that alludes to the redemptive work of Christ, which also symbolized a new covenant and a restored relationship with God. I can imagine how powerful and lifting this encouragement would be during this challenging time. There is great comfort to be reminded that God loves you and I very much. No matter how long our suffering may seem to us, it will come to an end. In my own walk with God, the many turbulent points of my life often felt like guided suffering because He was and is always with me and guided me through my suffering. Even though in those moments, it can feel like it will never end or it might even become worse. But I know that He brings me through these events to mold me and to refine me. And when the time is right, He lifts me out of the suffering. I don't know what you're going through right now, but if you're going through a difficult time, I hope that this encourages you that God will guide you and lift you out of it. His ultimate goal in our pain is not to make things difficult for us, is that we will be molded and refined and be able to attest to His goodness and faithfulness and to become more like Him.